Hello guys, this is uh, Mr. Gallegos and I'm here to teach you a little bit about sedition in World War I. So sedition is defined as any kind of speech or any kind of opinion that is against the rule or the law of a government. So during World War I there was a few people that decided they did not support the war and that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson here. So let's take a look. So we're going to start by answering this essential question here. Were critics of World War I anti-American? So we're going to be looking at the speeches of these two men here in the background, uh, Eugene Debs and Charles Schenck, and we're going to figure out if these two and others were anti-American because they did not support World War I. So let's figure out what they did. So we're going to start by answering these questions here. So think about these questions here before we start the lesson. What does patriotism mean to you? Do you think it's important for people to be patriotic? Why or why not? Is it patriotic or anti-American to criticize the United States government? So I'm asking you to think about these questions so you can reflect a little bit about what it means to criticize or be critical of the government. So let's start getting into the context of the lesson. During World War I, public opinion was divided. So on the left here, you have your pro-war people. And on the right, you have your anti-war people. So in the United States at the time, there were a lot of Americans that believed that we had to fight in World War I to protect our country for safety reasons. Uh, and others that were also on that side believed it was in the best interest of our defense to defend ourselves against the Germans who had already attacked uh, the Lusitania, which was a British ship that had some Americans on board. And uh, because they sent that telegram, or tried to send that telegram to Mexico, which was the Zimmerman telegram. On the other hand, you have the anti-war people here, the Americans who believe that the war was both immoral and was only a, kind of a, a deceitful plan that was trying to gain more money for capitalists. So these are the two sides of public opinion during a war. Now the United States enters the war and this division kind of continues. So Woodrow Wilson is re-elected in 1916, and he was re-elected on the concept that he kept us out of war. So a lot of Americans liked President Wilson because he was able to keep the United States out of the war. But by the time he was president, he tried to push through some legislation, and before he did that, he formed this Committee on Public Information, which was a, a propaganda agency, and he uh, organized it in April of 1917, and it was designed to, to show the public, it's kind of these images that sort of galvanized or stimulated more support for the war. Now, President Wilson also tried to push some legislation through Congress, and he was able to get these two laws passed, the Espionage Act of 1917 and the Sedition Act of 1918. And between these two laws, they were designed to stop people from being pro-German in the United States and to stop people from having anti-British opinions and sentiments. And so with this combination of these two laws, he was able to get 1,500 people prosecuted and about 1,000 people convicted of sedition, which is speaking against the government in times of war. Now, a lot of these dissenters or people who spoke against the government were deported, and uh, many of them uh, were not able to return to the United States. So let's close this lesson by asking ourselves some questions here so we can reflect. So first of all, ask yourself this question, what did President Wilson do to promote nationalism and to restrict dissent during the war? And based on what you know about World War I, do you think these were necessary decisions? So I hope this got you thinking about the war and I hope this got you thinking about dissent and sedition in World War I. Hope this helps. Bye.